Welcome to the Nav Viking tutorials. I'm Johannes Goodmanson, founder of Anecta, a Microsoft Dynamics NAV Gold certified partner. Hello and welcome to the Coffee Mac tutorials. Uh, we're going to keep going with uh, Power BI. And uh, right now I'm going to get into something a bit heavy. And I hope that's okay with everyone. Um, it's just so much fun. So <laughs> how to do it, right? Anyways, um, basically I'm going to start playing around with R. Uh, R is a um, mathematical library that you can use in Power BI. And it basically can do anything you want uh, mathematically uh, with the data and present it in a really nice uh, chart. So I'm going to show you how we can do forecasting in Power BI using R. Um, so we're still working on uh, cash flow. So I want to do cash flow forecasting. This, of course, uh, is putting in all of the uh, AR, AP, uh, liquid funds, etc. However, what I want to do is see if I can extend this chart to, to predict how the cash will go forward and kind of statistically uh, tell me, you know, where we'll be. So what I'm actually looking for is a forecasting um, algorithm that will give me sort of uh, a line with like, um, you know, deviation. So, so I could see like where the system thinks it's gonna go and what the likelihoods are that it's gonna stay inside a certain parameter, etc. I mean, if you guys have, um, looked at hurricane charts and stuff like that, the paths as the hurricane goes, they have the same type of uh, prediction models. So it's kind of like that that I want to get going. Um, but anyways, uh, R. We have R in here, so R script visual. So I'm actually going to just go ahead, create a new page, uh, throw in one of the uh, tables, uh, put in my cash flow date, I actually renamed it CF date. Again, I want to move that to that. Uh, and I have a running total right here. So I have these two fields, the cash flow date and the running total, right? Like we've been working on before. And um, basically I want to graph that. I want to graph like I have on the other side, like here this line running total all the way up, but I want to include a forecast and I want to do it using R. Okay. So I cannot do that with any of the visuals here. They don't allow me to do any forecasting or any type of math to that level. Um, maybe you could use DAX with a table with something else. And I think it would get messy. Anyways, let's, let's use R. All right. So in order to use R, I just click R right here and I get a visual. So this is a visual of R, but what R comes with is actually this pane here uh, where I can drop in values. So I just check them off. I want the cash flow date and I want the running total. So you can see it gets, oh, now it's actually scripting some things. So, we got programming going on. And there is a little bit of programming here. Um, not much, but a little bit. All right. So. I'm going to use an R script and I'm going to type it up for you. I'm going to explain it to you a little bit how it works. You can just use what I use. But anyways, in order to get this forecasting going, I have to include a library. So I have to type in library here and it's called forecast. And that's an R. Now, if you are just, if you just installed Power BI with, um, uh, with just the default R settings, etc. If you try to actually compile this or get this to go by clicking here, this arrow to run script, uh, nothing really happens here. It actually gives me an error saying, because there's, I am not plotting anything, but it actually complains that it doesn't find the forecasting module. Um, so in order to get that module, I recommend installing R studio, this thing. Okay. You, if you want to go ahead and start working with this, that's fine. It's complicated. But with R Studio, you get this. It's free. You can just Google it. Uh, and you can actually go ahead and say install.packages and then say forecast. Like so. And it will install it. I actually did that already. 
So if I look here, I have my forecast package. Now, Power BI might complain a little bit more than missing other packages, and you're going to see it in the error message whenever you try to run the script here, and you just add that package with the same install method that I just did, and until you get all the packages. So that's kind of the uh, annoying part that you have to get through. But anyways, do it once, got it. And for fantastic forecasts, what, do we, what don't we do, right? So anyways, let's keep going. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a data set, see, which is going to aggregate the uh, running total amount over uh, let's see cash flow data. Okay. So that's just uh, bunching it up per date. Uh, and then I see the data is equal to data set and the function is so right. Uh, then I'm actually going to create time series. So if you know anything about forecasting, you need time series. Uh, and it's pretty easy. I'm just using the running total. So the function is time series, data set, um, running total. About like that. Uh, finally, I forecast. So I do here the forecast is equal to, and by the way, these arrows, they just mean equal to or puts the result into the variable. Forecast, yes, which is the final one. Uh, and then we just end up by plotting it. I'm just realizing that as I'm doing this, I might not need the statement here, the data set. I'm going to actually try to take that out. We'll see how that works. But anyways, if I plot it now, oops, I get an error. Um, see if data found. Uh, what am I doing wrong here? Over CF date. I included CF date here. Oh, same problem as usual. Uh, CF date here, I have to not have date hierarchy, CF date. <laughs> ah, and now I get it. All right, I'm sure we all do this mistake a lot. All right, so basically what's going on here? Uh, here we have a graph. If I look at page one, for example, it's the same graph as this one, the top one, except what happens is that it continues. And I actually think it's counting the days and I might go into how we can actually fix the axis on R in the next video and make these dollars. Uh, but it's, it continues and says, well, the trend is that it's going to go upwards. And the likelihood uh, is that it stays in this dark gray area here or dark blue gray. And then it's unlikely that it goes into the gray gray and it's very unlikely that it gets out of that. This is according to all the data that we have in here. So without really knowing anything about the data, like where it came from, etc., etc., the system is predicting how we'll go forward based on, on here. Um, and so, of course, the smaller the cone here, the more accurate the data is. Um, so this is really cool. I mean, you can use it for cash flow, of course, but why not use it for items, uh, the actual sales data or sales amounts? So you, there are many, many different options for this. I'm actually in this video since I keep on exploring. I'm going to take this out and I'm going to see if it works just with that. Um, seems like it does. So I actually just need these three statements right here. The first one that I had was redundant because the reason why I took, uh, been, I'm able to take it out is because we already have a running total. I was actually building the running total again with the first statement. So that's kind of frivolous. 
Anyways, uh, yeah, it's a YouTube video, so we kind of just stream as we go. And I hope you got something out of this. We got R working uh, with this fancy graph right here. And now we're probably going to move into how we can tailor this a little bit better. I hope you got something out of it. Uh, thumbs up if you did. Subscribe if you haven't. Until next time.